This lesson is going to be on loops as a general concept and a specific type of loop known as a for loop. So let's get started. What is a loop? Well, let's imagine that we want to execute some code multiple times. You might think easy enough, just copy and paste the same code multiple times. All right, what do you do when you need to execute it 100,000 times? Are you really going to copy and paste it 100,000 times or copy and paste it several times and multiply that and eventually get 100,000 lines of the same code? Maybe, uh, but you don't need to, okay? So we can execute this code multiple times without copy pasting it by using a loop okay a loop allows us to execute code multiple times right simple enough a for loop allows us to execute code for a specified amount of times. Simple, right? Now then, how do you make a for loop? Well, I'm just going to, whoops, I'm just going to code this out. I'm just going to do a multiple uh, like comment here. Comment it out. So, the first thing we need in a for loop is the keyword for. Then we need a name. This name doesn't matter. As long as it's a key name, not a keyword name, doesn't really matter. So this name represents a count or an iteration. Okay. And then we use the keyword in. And then we use a range. So we use a lower bound of range. Then we put three dots. And then we use an upper bound of range. Okay, so I'll just redo that in capitals just so it's okay. Then we have some curly brackets there. Then we have some curly brackets there. And this these are opening and closing curly brackets, obviously. All right. We want to tab in a little bit so that we can see where you know our code starts. And here we have some code that does something that we want to do multiple times, okay? Now this lower bound of range here uh, dictates the, 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 the first value of the count. So let's say we want to count start our count or our iteration at the number three, okay? This lower bound would be the number three. Let's say this is the upper bound, okay? Let's say we want it to be number nine. What will happen here is we will do this code, um, I think seven times, but we'll do, first of all, iteration. The lower bound iteration will be where it starts. So it starts at count number three, for example, and then it uses count number four. So it does it once for count number three, twice for count number four, five times on count, uh, three times on count number five, four times on count number six, five times on count number seven, six times on count number eight, and eight, uh, seven times on count number nine, which is the upper bound. Once it reaches the upper bound, it stops iterating. It stops executing this code. So it executes the code once for every single uh, number within this range, inclusive of the lower bound of the range and the upper bound of the range. Um, to show you what I mean, I will make an actual for loop. So we'll say for, oh, don't want it in capitals. So for is the keyword. We'll say for, we'll say for iteration instead of count. In, and we want our lower bound to be three. And then we put three dots. And we want our upper bound to be nine, as I've stated, right? And what we want to do is print the iteration. We want to see the value, right? And as I said, 
it starts at free and then it and, and then it executes this code for at count number three and then it executes the code all the way up to nine for each count uh, each number between three and nine it executes code once for each number and it also executes code for three the numbers three and nine okay I'll show you what I mean so it starts at three and it executes you know the lower bound and then executes every number in between you know executes every every it executes once for every single number should I say in between the lower bound and the upper bound so it executes one time for four executes one time for the fifth number for the sixth number for the seventh number and the eighth number and then finally it executes once for the upper bound and then it stops executing okay so it starts executing at the lower bound and it stops executing at the upper bound and executes for every number in between the lower bound and upper bound and also for the lower bound and the upper bound okay and this number is basically the count value iteration value this that we start at and this is the iteration value or count value that we end at okay that didn't make sense uh, you know replay this and try and understand i'm a bit tired so that's probably what my explanation isn't the best okay why would we want to do this well i've said you know you might want to do the same thing 10,000 times, 400,000 times. And as I say, it stops you from copying pasting this code over and over again. You might want to do some kind of maths uh, of some kind. I, I don't know what kind of maths you might want to do. You might want to do some complex maths. You, want, you might want to do a sum. So we'll say, we'll make a variable, we'll call it sum. We'll say it's equal to zero. We'll say for iteration in one to four. Three. Da, da, da. Sum equals sum plus iteration. Okay. What this is going to do, it's going to add the value of the iteration for each uh, to, to, to the value of sum every time it iterates, every time it executes this code. So it'll add the value of one the, to uh, the sum value, and the sum value will then be two. It'll add the value of 2 to the sum value, which at that point will be 1, and that will make the sum value 3. And then it'll finally add 3 to the end sum value. The sum value should be 6. So let's see if I'm right or wrong. Okay, we print sum at the end of this. And let's execute. So we should get the number 6 at the end of all this. And there we are. There's the number 6. Um, because the sum has worked. We can also use this for, I don't know, all kinds of obscure things. So we can use the value count and we can say for one in, I don't know, in one to five, for example. So we want to we wanna do something five times, right? We don't actually have to use this count value. Like we've used it here. We've used the iteration value here and we've used the iteration value here. We don't have to use it. You know, we can just print something five times. There's no reason why we have to use it. So we'll put hello new world. Okay. And if I run this, that should print five times. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. There you are. Quite simple. Let's say I want to use it and I also want to use a string. No problem. So we can say for count in one, two, of six shall we say we want to print we want to announce the count number so we'll say this is count number or count slash iteration number okay and then we'll add the string i think that's actually a capital letter yeah it is the string of count okay and we'll print this out hope this works if it doesn't i've got yeah it does work okay so this will not only tell us print out this is count an iteration number it'll tell us what iteration number it is and if you make four loops like this you'll start to understand the loops better because you can see what iteration number you're at okay so this is count slash iteration number one okay this is count iteration number two three four five okay Mm, but there's a problem with this 
okay let's say I use four count in one or in three to five okay and I print this again so I say this is count slash iteration number yada 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 plus string of count well actually yeah it's three four and five it's not the third fourth and fifth iteration actually it's actually the first second and third what has happened here is it's the count is a value three value four and value five okay but we've only had three iterations so if you want to have a count of your iterations what you can do is you can make a variable called i don't know iteration count okay and we'll say it's equal to zero right we'll say oh yeah we'll say it's equal to zero so we'll say for count in five to nine print well actually we'll say that iteration count is equal to iteration count plus one and we'll print this is count slash iteration number plus string this variable iteration count okay plus this the uh, the value the range value should we say the range value is da 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 mm, plus string of count it's a bit complicated so i'm just going to run it and i'll explain it after that hoping it works and it has okay so it, here it says this is count slash iteration number one and the range value is five okay so what i'm saying here is this is the first time that this this uh, code block has been executed that the loop has been iterated over this is the first iteration the first instance of us using this code here and the value of the range is five okay so that's the start range and the second loop on the second loop we'll say this is count slash iteration number two and the range value is six okay because that's what this value is going to be it's going to be six seven on the third iteration eight on the fourth iteration five on the ninth iteration and in this way I can see how many times I've used this loop, right? How many times this loop has executed, or the code in this loop has executed, and also the value of the range of the loop, right? How this works is because this starts at zero, and I always add one at the start of the loop, this becomes one at the first loop. So we can say, see that this is the first loop because that number gets printed out, okay? We also get the printout of this number. Right on the second loop, because this iteration count value is now equal to one and not not zero, we then add one to that and it then becomes equal to two, and then the range value will be six because it'll be one more than five, etc. 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 This is just a little way to show you how to know, you know, how many times you've looped or how many times you've executed the code in the loop, and also to see your range value because your range value doesn't have to start at one like it does here and so it isn't always a good indicator of how many times you've executed code or how many times the code will execute or the loop should i say will execute so a quick recap a loop is just something that executes the same code or a set of code um multiple times it's set, it, it's used because it will save you from copy and paste thing or, you know, it might have other uses, right? Which I won't go into right now. A for loop is something that we give a specific range to and it executes within that range, inclusive of the lower bound of the range and the upper bound of the range, okay? 
that's it. That's everything to do with four loops there. Anyways, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed.